are the founder of something called uh, Global Citizen, okay? Yes, that's right. And um, you have an amazingly, what's been called an insanely optimistic goal. And tell the people what it is. Well, our goal is that we really believe that we could be the first generation to end extreme poverty within our lifetime. So when I was 12 or 13, I started doing the 40-hour famine at Cary Grammar in Melbourne. And um, it was prompted because this lady by the name of Bridget Hogan came and spoke at our school assembly. And she spoke so passionately about World Vision's work, but also about, about the fact that we could be the generation to end extreme poverty and that extreme poverty wasn't, you know, the natural state of affairs and that and that there were children suffering and that we had the potential to 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 change that. And so as an eager 14-year-old kid I fundraised as much as I could and then I applied for this thing called the World Vision Study Tour. We went to the Philippines and it changed my life forever. It was one of the final nights where we were taken into a slum in the center of Manila called Smoky Mountain, which is a slum built on top of a rubbish dump where the very infrastructure of this community revolves around scavenging. And so the children literally run after the garbage trucks and they try to get bits of scrap metal, piece of food and things that they can recycle. And that night I was placed in the care of, of a kid my own age. We were both 14 at the time. His name was Sunny Boy. And where I'd come from middle-class Melbourne in Australia, Sonny Boy already had tattoos on his forearm at the age of 14 because he was about to become his gang leader and each of these tattoos was his form of initiation. And that night he took me to his house and we cooked this meal together with some food that I brought with me. But I, was, I had no idea what to expect when I walked into his house. It was this small shanty hut built on top of the rubbish dump and when it came time to go to sleep, we literally lay down on this concrete slab, myself and him and his whole family, seven of us in this long line. We had this smell of rubbish all around us and, and cockroaches crawling all around us and I, I couldn't sleep that night. I just lay awake thinking to myself, you know, it really is pure chance that I was born where I was born and he was born where he was born. Our roles could have so easily been reversed in life. and. You know, when it came time to wake up the next morning and we say goodbye, it just felt so, I, I just have never known how to reconcile the reality that that juncture, I went back to Australia, he stayed in his livelihood. Who determines the, the, the forces that, that bring us to where we are in our lives right now? And so I said, I said, you know, surely the injustice of extreme poverty has to end and surely there's a role we can all play in helping to end it. And that's what set me on the trajectory that I'm on now. I, I was very set on this idea that we need to create systemic change, not just, not just traditional charitable change, but try our best to, you know, break the systems that keep people poor and do so through building the largest possible movement. So our focus is on trying to recruit citizens who at the moment don't even care about global issues or they might care a little bit. And our job is to go out there and find them, recruit them and bring them in and, and help them to understand that they can create enormous change with their actions and their time. So Global Citizen is founded on this premise that all lives are created equal. And if we acted on that fact, we would act to end extreme poverty within our lifetime. Look at what we have done so far and I, I think that it counts for nothing until we've ended extreme poverty. So I don't think there's any room for pride. I more feel a sense of terror at how far we've got to go really and most people who think they've made it that's when they stop and I don't think we've made it at all. I think we've got such a long way to go so my hunger is as strong as ever. Don't wait, start right now and get involved. Because if you wait, you'll always think that there's a time in your life where you'll be somehow old enough, mature enough, wise enough, educated enough to do something great. That time never comes. We're all on the same journey and you may as well start now.
I'm convinced that if we had more global citizens active in our world, then every single one of the major challenges we face from poverty, climate change, gender inequality, these issues become solvable. They are ultimately global issues and they can ultimately only be solved by global citizens demanding global solutions from their leaders. There really is no limit to what people can achieve in their life if they are willing to make themselves uncomfortable and they're willing to do things that, that are not normal and not easy and not, you know, you know, not, not, the, not the regular path to walk on. That really does seem like kind of a crazy thing that you think is within <laughs> reach of humanity. What's the date you want to do it by? We want to do it by 2030. Yeah. Well, that, that is uh, incredibly refreshing just to meet someone who thinks that there's going to be a world in 2030. <laughs>